I want to show you fellas where a beautiful spot is what to my um, beliefs would have been very very special to Aboriginal people prior to white settlement so we'll go for a walk fellas and I'll quickly go and show you beautiful spot where I am right now all the birds and heaps of beautiful trees and everything else Just up here fellas on the edge of Lake Dombiont, beautiful eucalyptus trees, two different species right here, salmon gum and I think the other one's called a black butt. Salmon gum is the one on the left and the black butt's the one on the right. Anyway there's a beautiful beehive right here guys, I'll zoom up and I'll show you. Covered in bees. Like I just said guys, this area here covered in beautiful species of different eucalyptus trees and bankshire trees and uh, mallee root trees and weeping eucalyptus trees. So many more species guys. So you just got to imagine, you know, all of this area has all been cleared beyond here for farming and, you know, 100, 100 years ago, pre-1900, pre-1910, this area was settled in 1910. You can just imagine, you know, for as far as the eye can see beyond each horizon, you walk 30 kilometres and you look towards that horizon, then a walk another 30 kilometres and that horizon, no matter where you go, guys, all you could see back then was millions, tens of millions of eucalyptus trees. So you can just imagine back in the 1910 when all this land started getting cleared, you can just imagine the smoke, what must have went all over the whole horizons of farmers burning all the beautiful species of eucalyptus trees and just imagine all the different wildlife being killed or you know a big um, movement of wildlife trying to get from one patch of bush what's just being burnt to another patch of bush what's going to be burnt in the near future whereas it gets to the stage where they just got no more escape anymore you know Think about the wildlife but think about the insects you know all the insects every single species of uh, fauna insect what just must have must have been a total collapse of wildlife I, I reckon back in the 1900s and the farmers did not have a clue they didn't know they didn't know if only they could foresee the damage what they were going to do so who can we blame guys we can't really blame the farmers they didn't have a chance they just did all this to survive just like we all do but you just got to imagine guys there's tens of millions of acres i mean countries you know there's hundreds of countries the size of probably the netherlands holland thousands of new york cities tens of thousands of new york cities being wiped out in the early 1900s and like I say and just imagine looking at the horizon big plumes of smoke and at night there must have been big plumes of fire burning for the beautiful eucalyptus trees being bulldozed not bull, you know ripped down not with bulldozers by hand cut down with axes even Aboriginal people got paid to rip down their own beautiful trees what must have meant something to them can you imagine that they didn't have a clue what was going on, they just needed to survive as well. They didn't like the white man being here, but what choice do they have, guys? The white man's a lot stronger, you know, uh, psychologically than the Aboriginal person would have been. They got all their rights taken off them. And, you know, you walk through this here and, you know, it looks beautiful, but you can just close your eyes and think about what it must have looked like, guys. I say you know 
how much more can the land take from all this farming herbicides and pesticides you know all the rivers have been blocked and when the rivers do flow you know I've been to Lake Dumian before when it's got water in it and I've seen the oil and the herbicide um, pesticide shit sitting on top of the water you know like little oil slicks you know when I first saw it when I didn't have a clue about what was happening to the environment back in the early 1990s I just thought that yeah it must have been just boat fuel but you know when I look at it now I look back I know it's all the pesticides and herbicides and everything else what gets what you know because you've got to imagine guys all these paddocks they're saturated with chemicals and pesticides to make these crops grow and when it rains all of the water goes into the rivers and it runs off down the hills like here off the edge of edges of paddocks over there and runs down into the lake and kills everything just don't realize I mean you know it looks beautiful no matter what you look at but you know like I say will farmers be still farming in another hundred years I honestly do not think so guys and if they are farming I do not think they're going to be growing wheat and barley and everything else you know they've got to have a good hard look at themselves and start replanting paddocks like this you know they've got a there's got to be some type of government incentive to get bloody environment back to the way it was aerial aerial seeding of eucalyptus seeds and everything or everything what's natural to our area and all the other areas would have been wiped out so I could say guys all of these paddocks have been cleared for probably another thousand kilometers north that way another thousand kilometers we north or sorry well I'd say about another 500 kilometers uh, east that way five or six hundred kilometers another 300 kilometers south so 300 kilometers south has all been cleared all around 500 kilometers over there a thousand kilometers up there another 300 kilometers west so millions tens of millions of acres have just been wiped out it's you know a real shame guys you know I make these videos as a message for the people of the future to say that people like me knew what was happening to the environment and even though yeah so that's all I can say guys this is my videos for my message to the people of the future to understand that there's people like me and thousands of people like me we know what's happening to the environment from farming you know not just farming you know all types of farming agriculture fruit farming sugar cane all the chemicals of the sugar cane crops flow into the great barrier reef everything guys so but yep hopefully one day the government or some good politician will come in and give farmers an incentive to actually maybe even buy back the farmland and then do aerial seeding of the land what's been contaminated with pesticides and herbicides and replant all the different species of uh, native flora and that way even reintroduce the different types of uh, wildlife that have been wiped out wallabies rock wallabies this you know I'm not an expert when it comes to the wildlife but what's been wiped out guys but I know there's been thousands of species of uh, wildlife hundreds of species of probably marsupials everything all right guys so that's my rant so I'm pretty passionate about it because everywhere I go I see this guys I see forests wiped out and when, even when you do walk in these beautiful forests you see the salinity rising up from the surface and there's none here because the lake's down that way and this land is so high up above the lake so this area is beautiful but when you walk down to the bottom of like over the other side of Lake Dombiang you know you walk in the bush sands see all the bloody salinity coming up in the beautiful virgin country like this and also fellas like I said I've done a beautiful video not too long ago on the sandalwood tree or the sandalwood cutters like this area here would have been covered in tens hundreds of thousands of sandalwood trees 
and then the big sandalwood boom came, wiped out all of the sandalwood trees. There's only, instead of being millions left, there's only hundreds left now, and like right here. So this is not, this is an example of where someone's tried to cut down this tree with a chainsaw. So this probably could have happened in the 1950s possibly. But obviously the tr chain looked like it was blunt, blunt chain. So they cut halfway through it, they killed this tree. Would have been a beautiful probably salmon gum tree or a black butt eucalyptus tree. The salmon gum is a, one in the middle of the two darker trees. Or this one right here but yeah they would have come through with their handheld saws the sandalwood cutters and wiped out all of the sandalwood trees around this area uh, sandalwood for the sandalwood oil and so much more but anyway guys i really appreciate it and yeah i am very passionate i'm not a militant greenie but i'm a great definitely a greenie around my area in west australia and the great southern dumbuyong maybe someone will Thank me one day. What can I do, guys? Just make videos about it. That's all I can do. And right here, fellas, this is what I kind of like seeing when these big, massive eucalypt trees get blown over in storms and so forth. But this so strong and sturdy these trees guys you can see this tree here probably about i can easily two or three hundred years old big storms come and blown off the big base of the, the top of the tree you can just see over here the whole tree's been blown down the half of the tree it's a big tree and it's so strong and sturdy that you know it's still living you can just see here a new trees are actually growing out of the actual tree well not actually a new tree but new branches so just a really something i really love seeing when these big trees get blown down or struck by lightning and the beautiful regrowth starts coming up from the sides and obviously this here would be beautiful probably fasca gulls living inside that uh, bat species of bats it's a huge big hollow what opens up down here you can even see a bird feather in there guys look at this oh it's a bronze wing pigeon so that's a bronze see the beautiful bronze look at that guys a bronze wing pigeon feather so right there guys oh you're not going to believe it guys it's actually a bronze wing pigeon nest inside there that is amazing so you can't really see it but inside there there's a heap of feathers and it looks like a, possibly a nest of some kind what's inside this beautiful big hollow and that's why it's got the bronze wing pigeon guys you can just see the beautiful feather the beautiful golden bronze colour the bronze wing pigeon but like I say guys eucalyptus trees like these big hollows they're renowned for their hollows all different types of birds will live inside them uh, bats um, wildlife snakes possums fasca gulls insects uh, snakes and lizards geckos you name it guys frogs will live down the base of the trees or so snakes so just one tree can look after you know a hundred different species of animal so it's just an amazing thing you don't really see too many of these massive big eucalypt trees around my area oh, it's just beautiful being out here and once again right on the edge of lake dombiong on the ski club side of the lake and right here guys uh, another example black bite eucalyptus and the tree's been blown down or hit by lightning or something else wind and you can see the branches growing up the size to regenerate new growth 